Hi everyone and welcome to the part 4 of the Azure Fundamental Series. So let's get started with the question. So the first question in today's video is that which cloud computing benefit provides continuous user access to cloud-based application with minimal downtime? The options are option A, agility, option B, scalability, option C, elasticity, and option D, high availability. And the correct option is high availability. So the downtime is directly opposite to the availability. So the high availability gives us minimal downtime. And this is the uh, explanation and definition of high availability. So high availability is a quality of computing infrastructure that is important for mission critical systems. High availability permits the computing infrastructure to continue function even when certain component fails. So here is explanation in the form of a diagram. So if we have some users that are accessing certain type of application through the internet. So currently let's suppose these are the server that are hosting the application. So if any server of this cluster fails, then we have replicated servers. These servers can take place of this server. And again, if this server fails, we have another server. So this concept is known as high availability that you have redundant resources. And in case of any component or any servers in your cluster fails, then there is no impact on the user performance because there are, you have already redundant resources that can replace the failed components. So that is the concept of high availability, that the user just does not incur or does not experience any type of downtime and that is the main feature and uh, benefit of the cloud computing. Question number 47 is that what are the two benefits of cloud computing? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. And options are option A, enable the rapid provisioning of resources. Option B, has increased administrative complexity. Option C, has the same configuration options as on-premises and option D, shifts capital expenditure capex to operating expenditure opex and the correct options are that the cloud enables us of rapid provisioning the resources uh, why is that because we don't need to install cable and provision the cooling infrastructure all these things these are all taken care of by the cloud provider and we can spin off and provision resources very rapidly just in the matter of second and minutes using the uh, using just few clicks and again we don't need to invest any capital expenditure for buying hardware such as servers etc we just incur the operational expenditure we are charge for the expenditure of the resources or the VMs that we use. So in the cloud, we just experience the capital operational expenditure in the form of resource usage. And this model is known as pay as you use or pay as you go. Question number 48 is that what is a feature of an Azure virtual network? And the options are option A, resource cost analysis, option B, packet inspection, option C, geo redundancy, and option D, isolation and segmentation. And the correct option is the virtual network, Azure virtual network provides us with isolation and segmentation. So what is Azure virtual network? It is the fundamental building block of your private network in Azure. VNet enables many types of Azure resources such as Azure virtual machines to securely communicate with each other, the internet and on-premises network. V-network or VNet is similar to a traditional network that you would operate in your own data center but brings with it additional benefits of Azure's infrastructure such as scale, availability and isolation. Question number 49 is that you need to identify the type of 
Pellier power which an Azure availability zone can be used to protect access to Azure services. What should you identify? And the options are option A, a physical server failure, option B, an Azure region failure, option C, a storage failure, and option D, an Azure data center failure. And the correct option is the Azure data center failure. So this is an overview of the availability zone as well as region inside Azure. So on the very large scale, you have regions. This is Azure region and inside Azure region, you have multiple availability zone. Here we have availability zone one, two and three. And then inside each availability zone, we have multiple data centers, one or more data centers. So here, for example, we have one, two and three data centers in each availability zone. So if God forbid one data center fails and your resources or your application is and uh, is replicated across multiple data centers then the user won't experience any downtime your application will still be available from the other data centers so that is the concept of availability and high availability in azure question number 50 is that you plan to deploy several azure virtual machines you need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution, you deploy the virtual machines to two or more resource groups. Does this meet the goal? And the options are yes or no. And the correct option is no. And why is that? It is because a resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. The source group can include all the resources for the solution or only those resources that you want to manage as a group. So the source group is just a management uh, concept. It is a container, a container and it does not cater for high availability. It is not a high availability solution. So the answer is no. Question number 51 is that you plan to deploy again several virtual machines you need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution, you deploy the virtual machines to a scale set. Does this meet the goal? Again, the options are yes or no. And the correct option is again, no. It is because this answer does not specify that the scale set will be configured across multiple data centers. So this solution does not meet the goal. So if one data center fails, it means that your resources or application must be deployed across multiple data centers. But here, the solution does not uh, represent or does not provide the replication of resources across multiple data centers. So this is again not the correct solution. Question number 52 is that your company plans to migrate to Azure. The company has several departments. All Azure resources used by each department will be managed by a department administrator. What are two possible techniques to segment Azure for the departments? And the options are A, multiple subscriptions, B, multiple Azure Active Directories, C, multiple regions, and D, multiple resource groups. And the correct option is multiple subscriptions as well as the multiple resource groups. Say, so as we studied in the previous question, in resource group, you can group up similar or resources that uh, belongs to the same department. So you can make different uh, resource group and each resource group for each department. Similarly, you can have multiple subscriptions, uh, different subscription for each department. Subscription means that the accounting and the billing uh, subscription. So if you can uh, subscribe or you can gain subscription separately for each department, that will also give you a separate administrator, uh, administrative overview as well as the resource groups. Question number 53 is that you attempt to create several managed Microsoft SQL Server instances in an Azure environment and receive a message that you must increase your Azure subscription limits. What would you do to increase the limits? And the options are A, create a service health alert, 
B. Upgrade your support plan. C. Modify an Azure policy. And D. Create a new support request. And the correct option is that to increase your resource limit, you need to create a new support request. It is because many Azure resources have quota limits or quote limits. The purpose of the quota limits is to help you control your Azure cost. However, it is common to require an increase to the default quota. You can request a quota limit increase by opening a support request. Question number 54 is that your company plans to move several servers to Azure. The company's compliance policy states that a server named Pinch server must be on a separate network segment. You are evaluating which Azure service can be used to meet the compliance policy requirements. So which Azure solution should you recommend? Options are option A. A resource group for fin server and another resource group for all the other servers option b a virtual network for fin server and another virtual network for all other servers c a vpn for fin server and a virtual network gateway for each other server and d one resource group for all the servers and resource log for fin server and the correct option is that you need to have a virtual network for fin server and another virtual network for the other server so the virtual network is basically the network segmentation concept it will keep the fin server and other servers separate the question states that fin server must be on a separate network segment the only way to separate fin server from other servers is net in networking term is to place the server in a different virtual network to the other servers Question number 55 is that you plan to map a network drive from server computers that run Windows 10 to Azure storage. You need to create a storage solution in Azure for the plain map drive. What should you create? And the options are option A, an SQL and Azure SQL database. Option B, a virtual machine database. Option C, a file service in a storage account. And option D, a blob service in a storage account. And the correct option is a file service in a storage account. So to create a storage solution in Azure for mapping a network drive from computers running Windows 10, you will need to create an Azure file share. An Azure file share is a managed file storage service that enables you to create a shared network drive in Azure and access it from any device that supports the SMB server message block protocol, including the computers running Windows 10. Question number 56 is that your company plans to start using Azure and will migrate all its network resources to Azure. You need to start the planning process by exploring Azure. What should you create first? And the options are a, a subscription, B, a resource group, C, a virtual network, and D, a management network. And the correct option is A, subscription. So the first thing you create in Azure is a subscription. You can think of a Azure subscription as an Azure account. You get billed per subscription or per account. A subscription is an agreement with Microsoft to use one or more Microsoft Cloud platform or services for which charges accrue based on either a per user license fee or on cloud based resource consumption. Question number 57 is that which Azure service should you use to collect events from multiple resources into a centralized repository? The options are option A. Azure Events Hub, Option B, Azure Analysis Services, Option C, Azure Monitor, and Option D, Azure Stream Analytics. And the correct option is the Azure Event App. And the Azure Event Hub is a big data streaming platform and event ingestion service. It can receive and process millions of events per second. Data sent to an event hub can be transformed is stored by using any real-time analytics provider or batching slash storage adapters. 
Question number 58 is that you need to be notified when Microsoft plans to perform maintenance that can affect the resources deployed to an Azure subscription. What should you use? And the options are option A, Azure Monitor, option B, Azure Service Help, option C, Azure Advisor, and option D, Microsoft Trusted Center. The correct option is the Azure Service Health. So the Azure Service Health provides a personalized view of the health of the Azure services and regions you are using. This is the best place, best place to look for service impacting communications about outages, planned maintenance activities and other health advisory, advisories because the authenticated service health experience knows which services and resources you currently use question number 59 is that you plan to deploy several azure virtual machines you need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machine remain available if a single data center fails what are two possible solutions each correct answer represents a complete solution and the options are a deploy virtual machines to two or more availability zones option b deploy the virtual machines to two or more resource groups Option C, deploy the virtual machines to a scale set. And option D, deploy the virtual machines to two or more regions. And the correct options are to deploy the virtual machines to two or more availability zones and deploy the virtual machines to two or more regions. So again, this is a concept of region and availability zone. If you deploy resources to two or more availability zones, then if there is some issue in one availability zone, your resources or application will still be available from second availability zone. Since similarly, this is one region, there are also multiple regions. This is, let's suppose, Azure region one, there may be Azure region two. And it will also have similarly availability zone one, availability zone two, and so on. So if your resources in one availability zone fails, and they are deployed across secondary availability zone, your user will still be able to access the resources from the second available uh, second Azure region. Question number 60 is that what is the most severe failure from which an Azure availability zone can be used to protect against to protect access to Azure services? The options are a physical server failure, b an Azure an Azure region failure, C, a storage failure, and D, an Azure data center failure. So the correct answer is the data center failure. So we have multiple availability zones. Let's suppose this availability zone, and then we have multiple data center inside each availability zone. Let me draw this, is, let's suppose availability zone two. Here again, we have one or more data center, typically three. So if one data center fail, the availability zone can help us from the secondary data center. And even <clears throat> if our resources are replicated across multiple availability zone, if the complete availability zones, we can access resources from the secondary availability zone. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.